assembled together to study every word, Lord oh God. We just thank you for being the Lord of our lives. We thank you for giving us the desire to seek after your word, to seek after your heart, Lord oh God. We thank you for all the promises, promises that you have made, Lord oh God, unto us, that you have brought forward unto us, Lord oh God. Oh, we know that it is, it is in you that we live, move, and have our being. And so we thank you for we know to, to live with Christ, to die in vain. So we thank you for you have established this world that we will win. Win, win, win. And so we just thank you this morning. Pray that you will continue to suffer this be here. By your anointing, Lord God, to rule by, to rule in the Bible, to move in the According to your will, we pray that you will abide in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a good thing God needs to be one of you. We are in the 17th chapter of the book of Acts. This morning,
through the Bible list, you know that because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained. That's Jesus Christ. Wherefore he has given assurance unto all men. You have an assurance. In that he raised him from the dead. So, because he raised him from the dead, that word assurance, that word assurance suggests to you and I security, or trust, a positive declaration intended to give confidence, a promise, a certainty about something, guarantee. Bow a bond. And that word raised simply suggests the resurrection from the dead to awake, to come to life, lift up, elevate. And so this is what we're dealing with. We want to encourage your hearts and encourage your mind to understand that your assurance and my assurance has not only been appointed by the Lord, but it has been ordained by the Lord. And Him and the resurrection of Jesus Christ or the, the bringing Jesus Christ back to life assures you and I. Not only does it assure us, assure us, assure us says it's a certainty about something. It's a promise, it's a vow. Now, we know that the Lord made promise to Abraham. And because he couldn't promise by any greater than himself, he, he, he promised himself. He, he made a, a oath, a vow. And the Bible said, by these two immutable things, God which cannot lie. And the two immutable things is God made a promise to Abraham. And he made an oath to Abraham. And what you and I are experiencing now in our lifetime is the will of God being worked out in you and I. Because God who cannot lie. And he has made an oath and he has made a promise that by the seed of Abraham, that we all would be blessed. And we know that that seed is Christ. And he said because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. So much so, the Bible declared that unto him who is able to present us unto him, unto the glory of him, unto his to the glory of him, faultless. This is, this is an assurance. This is the assurance we have. This is the promise we have. This is the guarantee that we have. That the Bible declared that he who has begun a good work in you, it is he who will perform it or complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. We have to understand how your assurance came. It didn't come by some slick philosophy. Stop falling for that. We have to stop falling for our intellect being tickled and we being inspired and encouraged by these good motivational speeches. Your assurance and my assurance came because the Lord made a promise to Abraham eons ago. 
that says God cannot lie, all he can do is fulfill. So here you and I come along and we have this assurance. But this assurance for you and I is predicated upon our faith. The Bible said we are saved by grace, not by works, lest any man should boast. You and I will never be able to work for eternal life because grace is the unmerited favor of God. And if you and I could merit it, it then it's no more grace. It would be works. And then the Bible said it, then if it's works, then it's a debt because we owe it. And then if it's a debt, we in trouble because we can't pay it. <laughs> it took the grace of God. It took God, it took God declaring that all was under sin. He said, after the similitude of Adam. And so since he declared all was under sin and all has sinned and come short of the glory of God, then he declared that all would be under the grace of God since the man appointed, since the man appointed died and was buried and was raised. We all have grace because he propitiated the penalty of sin, the debt of sin. He atoned for the debt of sin. Taking my time, but I don't take all day. I'm taking my time because we have to we have to learn and understand what to be excited about. We have to Stop being discouraged because somebody said that you were short. This is where I'm going to lie. Woo! Sometimes when people, sometimes when, sometimes when people tell you you were short, you get discouraged. Because you say, man, I've been working hard, I've been trying to do this, I've been trying to do that. The truth of the matter is, it was never by your works. But when you learn the truth, you, you stop giving heed to what people say. The Bible says, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Now, he said he has appointed a day in that which he will judge the world in my philosophy, your philosophy. He will judge the world, he said, in righteousness. Now, for you and I, so we can just cut through the yard and all, but I don't have other stuff. For you and I, for the body of Christ, for the church to understand righteousness, the righteousness of God for you and I is faith in Jesus Christ. That is the righteousness. We've already understood and established. You ain't gonna do no work and declare you righteous. That's not gonna happen. That's not how your salvation gonna come. You have been assured, you have been assured, assured that this man that the Lord ordained, that his death and his burial and his resurrection, and when you believe in that, the Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We've got, we've gotten too intellectual, we've gotten too intelligent, and we have polluted the truth. The truth of the matter is, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. And the Bible declared in the book of Galatians five and six that circumcision availeth nothing. Uncircumcised, neither he said uncircumcision availeth anything. It says, but faith. And then he goes on to say, which working by love. Let's get deep. Okay. Woo, get deep. So, the reason he said that without faith is impossible to please.
Because without faith, there's no love. And the Bible said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And Jesus told him that this is the work to believe on whom the Father has sent. That is the work. Now, for those of us that don't understand, that's a hard job. <laughs> because you have an adversary that don't want you to believe the truth of the word. You have an adversary that only coming but to steal, kill, and destroy. You have an adversary that will tell you, well, you don't deserve eternal life. You have an adversary that will tell you all the wrong that you've been doing in your life, and you got the nerve to go to church. This is why he said the works for you and I is to simply believe on him whom the Father has sent. Because if we believe on Jesus Christ, the Bible said, whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Look, you and I are not going to overcome the world with gimmicks and tricks. You and I are going to overcome the world by simply believing in the fact that Jesus died and was buried and was risen for our salvation. That's what it's going to do. Because that shows you the power of God. When you understand that death means repentance, then you understand that Jesus died to himself. And once we understand the gospel and begin to die to ourselves, that's the first step. Because the Bible said, who that if any man come after me, let him what? Deny himself. Deny himself. That's the first thing you got to do. Then you got to take up your cross. Then you got to follow after him. Don't tell him about your cross. He already know it's heavy. He already know that it's, 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 it's overwhelming sometimes. He already know the difficulties, the difficulties that you're going through. But it does not change the fact that he works and take it up and follow after me. Don't tell me how many problems you got. I know how many problems you got. But if you follow after me, I will show you how they, my, my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I will show you how they just going to fall off after, after a while. But if you never get started, you have to understand this is why the scriptures say he that believe it. Because first you have to believe it in your heart. That's the first thing you got to do is believe it. And then after you believe it, belief prompts your faith. And after belief prompts your faith, you have to understand how faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen, you're not going to see it. But you have to understand, first you have to believe. That's going to prompt your faith. And once your faith is prompt, once your expectation is, is, is stirred up, then that's going to prompt your obedience. And once your obedience is put in place, <laughs> woo! it is better to obey than sacrifice. Once our obedience is put in place, then we can follow after the Lord. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Nobody got to judge you. Nobody got to examine you. The Bible lets us know that if we, if we love him, we'll keep his commandments. So when we are disobedient, there's a problem with our love. I'm not going to say we don't, but I'm going to say there's a problem with it. It may not be as strong as we think it is. And if I would break, and if I would break that down in the natural, then you would take that puzzle look on your face. Because most of us have probably said it in our lives to our mate sometimes, said if you love me, you wouldn't have did that. So now you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the Bible said if you love me, you would keep my commandments. Some of us have told people sometimes, if you love me, you would have did dust and dust and dust. So don't act like we don't understand what the word is saying. Amen. When you love something, 
When you love something, you've got to make a decision. Uh, Joshua said, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Stop falling for that philosophy that people tell you, oh, you got a free will. You ain't got no free will. That's a lie from the pits of hell. You ain't got no free will. God gave you a choice. You got to choose. It, it free means it. free means there's no cost. And you and I already know at the end of this life where we're going. Either direction. So ain't nothing free. Don't fall. Stop falling for the few philosophies that's what I'm trying to tell you. Stay with the truth. You and I have to choose whom we're going to serve. And the Bible says we cannot serve two masters. We're going to love one and we're going to hate the other one. He said we cannot serve God and man. I know we like to serve money because that's what the motivational speaker gets you to, to chase out the money. But the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. So really what they're doing is teaching you and I how to, how to be covetous, how to be covetous with people. What we desire and seek after that. Wake up, people of God, and get back into the truth of your world. Your God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. You ain't got to change after nothing. And don't let nobody inspire you to go chase after nothing. Your God, it's, it's your God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The Bible says that no good thing will he withhold. You've got to learn the word of God and stop following all these philosophies. Because all they do is send us back. The enemy don't care. The enemy don't care about nothing. He just don't, he just don't want your faith established in the word. That's all his job is. To steal, kill, and to destroy. He don't, want, he don't want your faith established in the word. What are you talking about? If you go back to creation, go back to creation's account. God had given them the word, told them what was going to happen. He said, uh, in this garden right here, I'm paraphrasing, but stay with me. In this garden right here, the Lord said, all these trees you can freely eat, all of them. He said, but except the two in the midst, tree of the uh, good and evil, and the tree of the knowledge, I mean, the tree of the knowledge of uh, good and evil and the tree of life. He said, don't eat them. Now, here's another fault church people have. We want the pastor to follow you around. Follow you around on that pastor. Well, okay. And chastise you and follow you around. This and that, that, and the other. That's what religion does. That's what cults, that's what cults does. That's what cults do. But men of God don't do that. The Lord gave them that commandment. And he, you ain't never read it in the Bible where he ran back over and said, all right, now y'all, I'm guilty talking to the servant about them trees. The Lord don't do that. Why do you want your pastor to do that? That ain't what he's supposed to do. He gave you a word, and if you love God, you will keep the commandments of God. You ain't got, anybody got to chase and follow you. That God, God can chase and follow him. Bible, make a long story short, the Bible says she ate and turned and gave this out of the head. The Lord ain't intervened yet, but we that long. He ain't jumped in and intervened yet, but we want folks to jump in and intervene. No. Put your faith in the Word of God and, and, and be obedient to what God said, period. And after they ate that fruit, and after they, after they realized that they were naked, then they understood that they had seen it, they had failed. Seeing that it hit into their heart, they got convicted and they tried to hide. Don't tell me conviction won't make you hide. Don't tell me conviction won't make you try to get somewhere and not be seen. I know what conviction to do. And then they tried to do it, they tried to hide. And the Lord came looking for it like he did on a daily basis because, you know, the Lord sucks with us. You know, the Lord fellowship with us because we house his spirit today. And so the Lord comforts us and he walks with us. And so when that conviction kicks in and, 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 and we desire to go hide from the presence of the Lord, sometimes he'll just simply speak to us when we get by ourselves and say, uh, what's the problem here? And, and, and Adam said, I'm, I'm naked. He said, who told you you were naked? I ain't telling you you was naked. I ain't said you was naked. Who told you you was naked? He already knew. He, had already, he already knew that they had disobeyed his commands. Hear what the Spirit said. 
We have a we have a we have a assurance. We have assurance. Don't let nobody slip talk you out of obeying the word. Hear what the Bible is saying. They had an assurance. They were eternal beings. They were made perfect in that garden. They were buck naked. And, and there was no shame. There was no sin. There was no guilt. They were, they were in raw, open, created form until sin. Message. And when sin filled, they filled in their heart. Filled their heart because of disobedience. The Lord said, look, and you know the story after that. I had, that's why we in trouble now. That's why the world, now let me say this and give a lesson. That's why this world that you and I live in is still in uh, a fallen, fallen state. The world. We want the spirit to stand for the church. The Lord, the Lord is redeeming you and I out of the world. He's not going to take us out of, out of the world, so to speak. But he's redeeming you and I out of, out of the world. He's, he's, he's making a body. He's, he's preparing a body. And we don't have to be a part of that world anymore. He's making a body. And he's going to, the Spirit says, he's going to judge the world in righteousness. There's a point in day he's coming, he's going to judge the world in righteousness. So he's getting you and I out of, out of the way. The, the Bible says you and I were not appointed to wrath, but you and I were appointed to obtain salvation. So he's redeeming you and I out of, of the world. But the, the issue is, we still over there talking with the serpent, still want to be a part of the world. And, what, and our assurance is, look, I have redeemed you out of the world. Stay in your safe place. Stay in your deliverance. Let me get in the lesson before I take off. I don't do nothing. The pre preaching moments. The preaching moments, but it's not about entertainment. Man said you can pick the anytime. Preach on it's about it's about establishing our faith. Luke Luke the, the 18th chapter of the book said when the Lord returned, will you really find faith? A lot of us they told, oh yeah, you say you yeah, have we got faith, but our faith is we win and lose in our faith. We win and lose in our faith. And our faith has to our faith has to be in the assurance. That the Lord raised up Jesus Christ for you and I. Jesus Christ paid the price of sin for you and I. We don't have to be disqualified. We basically sin because we want to. We basically sin because we get caught in some type of philosophy or whatever. But he has, he has given us the power, the victory. We don't have to sin. All we have to do is obey the word of God. The word of God says be slow to speak, but we quit singing. All you got to do is be slow to speak. Spirit to hear. Don't let nobody press you. Don't let you hear me talk to you. Yeah, don't answer you when I get ready. Yeah. <laughs> we just got to learn how to live. Yeah. To learn how to do it. He said be slow to speak. Spirit to hear. Hear him, hear him all the way out before you say anything. Or anything that ain't going to do but he has, he has given us his strength. Acts 2 and 24 said this, whom God has raised up, had it loose the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holy of that. He talking, he's talking about Jesus Christ. And because Jesus was obedient to his father, to the will of his father, you understand Jesus said, I do, I only do the things that my father said. You, when you understand uh, why Jesus was so powerful. Because Je Jesus was so powerful and so anointed because he didn't concern himself with the things of his life. He, his only mission was to bring forth his father's will. He, he spoke and he walked and he did the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. He didn't let this life, this world, sidetrack him. You and I would be just that powerful if we would stop allowing the world to sidetrack us, and if we would stay 
on point. If we would stay on the word, then we can lay hands on folk. But you can't lay hands on folks when you mix and meet it all with the world. You have no authority. You have no power. Because the enemy won't allow your spirit. He won't allow your faith. You have to understand this is the spiritual warfare. We don't wrestle flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world, this life, against spiritual wickedness in high places that will not allow your they will not allow you and I to stand firm in our faith, in our faith in what we believe. The Bible said, these things shall follow them that believe. All right. Now you mean to tell me the Lord is alive? No. no. These things shall follow them that believe. They should speak in a new tongue. They should lay hands on the sick and they should recover. And if they drink any death, then it shall not harm them. This is an assurance. You have to understand what an assurance is. Assurance is security. It's trust. And we've got to get to the place where we trust God in our faith, in our belief. We've got to trust that God has an assurance for us. And we've got to stop mixing the word of God with what we think. You ain't never read no script that said you're going to be saved according to what you think. You ain't never read it. But somebody told you that your opinion and your thought was valuable. But my opinion and your opinion is not valuable when it comes to the will of God. Because the Bible said God's word is forever settled in heaven. And the Bible declared that from the foundation of the world, Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And he said, my word will never or not return unto me void. So your opinion and my opinion has no comparison to what the Word of God says uh, because He spoke it from eternity. Uh, the Bible said in the beginning God created heaven and earth. Uh, God spoke His Word before we existed. Uh, so how in the world are you going to let somebody tell you uh, that you can stand before God with an opinion? The Bible would urge you and I to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Uh, and in due time, He will exalt you. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let us get to the next one before God help us again. Romans 4, this is a good one. Romans 4 and 25. You got the worksheet. I don't know. We might end it after this. I don't know. You got the worksheet. Romans 4, 24 and 25. It says, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, 25, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Now, we have a couple of asterisks in there. And the first asterisk is with imputed. And imputed says it is, he, he said it like this. He said, excuse me, but for us also, to whom it shall be, Imputed to whom it shall be credited to you and I, and shall be regarded to our accounts, he said, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Period. Now, you got to hear what the Spirit says. They're talking about our Father according to faith. They're talking about Abraham. And the Bible said, Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying. And the writer Paul here says, but for us also, to whom shall it be imputed or shall it be credited to or shall it be given or added to our account if we believe. So you got to hear what the Spirit is saying. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I begin to feel good. Because you have to understand your your labor, God is not unfaithful to forget your labor of love. And if you believe God, just keep believing God. And if you trust God, just keep holding on to God. Because He is imputed it, or He is credited it to your account. If you believe God, just keep believing God. It doesn't matter what comes, it doesn't matter what goes. It doesn't matter what transpires in your life. You 
you have to understand you have an assurance. Huh? You have a vow. Huh? You have a bond with God. Huh? That no demon in hell can break it. Huh? As long as you keep your faith in God. Huh? As long as you keep believing in Jesus Christ. Huh? As long as you understand this one thing. Huh? That for God I live. Huh? And for God I die. Huh? The Bible declared that to live is gain. Huh? To live is Christ. Huh? And to die is gain. Huh? But you have to understand this thing is predicated huh? on your faith. Huh? Verse 25 goes on to say, huh? who was delivered for our offenses. Huh? Jesus sacrificed his life huh? because we couldn't do it. Huh? Jesus was delivered. Huh? In other words, the Bible declares huh? that God sent forth his son. Huh? Not to, not, God sent forth his son huh? into the world, not to condemn the world. But that the world through him, uh, that it might be saved. Uh, he said, But well, here is the condemnation. Uh, the condemnation is that men love darkness uh, rather than light. Uh, the Bible lets you and I know uh, that they, they, therefore, that are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8 and 1, he said, There is now that, therefore no condemnation uh, to them that walk not after the flesh, uh, but after the Spirit. Uh, and, and, and Jesus confirmed it. He said, He said, the Lord confirmed it when He said He sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, huh? but that the world through Him might be saved. Huh? You've got to hear what your assurance is. Huh? You've got to hear how your assurance comes. Huh? Your assurance comes through the Word of God. Huh? And if the Lord can give you an eye to believe and trust in the Word of God, huh? then He will assure your security. Huh? Then he will assure the promise that he made to Abraham. Uh, then he's working out your salvation. Uh, then he said it like this. He said, I go away to prepare a place. Uh, he said that where I am, there he may be also. Uh, he said, but in my father's house, uh, he said, there are many mansions. Uh, he said, if it were not so, uh, he said, I will simply just told you. Uh, you have to understand how God operates. He operates by his words. He said if it was not so, he said I would have told you. But since it is so, he said I told you in my words. Romans 6, 4 says this. He says, therefore we are buried with him by baptism. I don't know how many of you that have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. But we were baptized, we were buried with him by baptism into death. That as Christ was raised up from the dead uh, by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk uh, in the newness of life. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, I mean, if any man be in Christ, uh, he is a new preacher. He said, All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new, become new. You have to understand where our assurance comes from. Our assurance comes from the Word of God. Our assurance comes from the fact that God raised Jesus from the dead. And I want to get to this one, and I'm going to leave it alone. Where, where is the scripture that I'm looking for? Maybe I didn't put it on there. Oh, yes, I did. It is back in Romans 4 and 25. It is the 25th verse. It is where he says this. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. That's what I'm trying to get you and I to understand. Jesus died to propitiate the sins of the world. And then he was raised again for our justification. This is why you have an assurance. Stop falling for the old you know. Stop letting the intellectual and, 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 and intelligent people teach. Mm. These false teachers, listen to what the Word of God says. It says Jesus was delivered for our offense. You and I could pay the price. So Jesus died for the, the penalty of sin. And not only did he die, but three days later, the Lord raised him up again. And the Bible said he raised him up for your justification. Yeah. And that justification got asterisk. And that asterisk said 
is vindication. Now, he raised him up that you and I would be vindicated. So, he raised him up, in other words, for you and I would have an assurance. So, we have this assurance uh, that we have this earthly, this, this, this thing in earthly vessels. Uh, we have this excellency in earthly vessels. Uh, and that the excellency is not us, uh, but it's the power of God in living in us. Uh, we just read in the scripture, he says, uh, that if we were buried with Christ in baptism unto death, uh, and just as the Father raised him up, uh, you and I also are supposed to walk in the newness of life. Uh, he's given you and I a new walk. Uh, this is your assurance. Uh, the thing that you used to do, uh, you don't have a desire to do no more. Uh, this is your assurance. Uh, you have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Uh, when God begins to call you, uh, when the calling of God begins to fall on your life, uh, He is simply trying to bring you and I to repentance. Uh, because repentance brings you and I unto salvation. Uh, once we repent of our sins, and not only our sins, but the Hebrew writer says it this way. He said, lay aside the sin and the weight that does so easily beset you, and run this race with patience that has been set before you. The race has been set before you and I. We don't change the race. Stop listening to them false teachers. The Bible declares we run with patience. You got to learn to wait on God. The Bible declares that they that wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not get weary. And they should walk and not faint. You have to understand the assurance you have. God has placed a vow of assurance. He has placed the hope down inside of you. And it is called the Holy Ghost. If you have the power of the Holy Ghost, then you have the power to be a witness unto Jesus Christ. You can repent of your ways and your sins. You can stand for God. And you can allow God to bring you into life. He said, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You have to understand what your assurance is. Your assurance is in the fact that God raised up Jesus Christ to let you know I did it for your justification. And it's because he did it that Jesus didn't see. Anybody didn't see corruption. Guess what? The Bible said the dead in Christ are going to rise first. But understand before he said that, he said the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the, the shout and the voice of an archangel. And when the trump sound, he said the dead in Christ will rise first. Just as Jesus did not see corruption in the grave, you and I coming out the grave, you and I coming out the grave, this is your assurance in what the Spirit is saying to the church. And he said, those of us that are alive and remain, he said, we will be caught up in the air to meet them together. This is your assurance. And he said, forever will we be with the Lord. And all you've got to do is believe this in your heart. You've got to believe this in your mind. And you've got to tell God, yes, we are of God. Paul said it like this. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Jesus Christ. He said, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all those that believe. He said, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. He said, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. He said, as it is written, he said, the just shall live by faith. You have, you have to understand where your assurance is. Your assurance is in faith of God. You have to understand where your deliverance is. Your deliverance is in the faith of God. You have to understand where your healing is. Your healing is in the faith of God. You have to understand how you're going to make it over. Because your faith is in God. Your faith is in the fact that God raised Jesus from the dead. For our justification. In other words, to vindicate us of all wrong. And he imputed our trend, he imputed and credited us. He declared us righteousness by his doing. This is why it takes faith in Jesus Christ. 
This is why you have to believe in Jesus Christ. Because faith in Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God. Woo! You and I will never be saved by works that we, that we have done. Stop letting the intellectual trick you. Stop letting the motivational speaker tell you, tell you how to be saved. If you want to be saved, put your faith in the one who raised up Jesus from the dead. If you want to be saved, put your faith in Jesus Christ and believe in your heart, believe in your mind. That God raised him up for your justification. The Lord would count on you. The Lord, the Lord would, the Lord would count on you and I to read and believe. Stop letting people tell you that. The Lord would count on you and I to come up with a ministry. We got to get a ministry. Stop letting people tell you that. The Lord. The Lord was simply, the Lord was simply counting on you and I to believe him just as he was counting on Adam and Eve to believe. All he did was disobey the word. And when we disobey the word, we get the same result. Get the same result. If we want the blessings of God, which you know that's what they preach now. The blessing got the blessing, the blessing got your name on it. Ain't that something? The blessing got your name on it. This is this is the intellectual. It's the way you enjoy emotion. It's different so emotions is sensitive wisdom. The Lord had already told you, you know, how many hairs on the head. Why do you let people excite you? Your blessing got to be your blessing. Your name, what is it called? What does it say? You got a blessing with your name on it. Yeah, let the preacher tell you you got a blessing with your name. God got a blessing with your name on it. And we get excited. The Lord had already told us, you know, every hair on our head. Y'all let people excite you with. with that's with our intellect, sensationalism, and all that type of stuff. Stick to the word. The Lord will supply every, every one of your needs. You ain't got to do no backflip, no tricks. You ain't got to deliver yourself, none of that. All you got to do is obey the word. Listen, listen. Sometimes that's why I hate you sometimes. Listen. The Bible lets us know that the, that that was written before was for our learning and our admonition. The Lord, look, look, look. The Lord sent Moses down to Egypt, and He delivered His people, those were God's people. Message. He delivered His people out of Egypt, the house of bondage. From the hard taskmaster, Pharaoh. <laughs> but look, he said, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna take you to the promise land. I'm not gonna promise that you're gonna take you. But he didn't go the way that was near. He could have got there in a few days. Read your Bible. He didn't go the way that was near. He went by way of the wilderness because he had to prove their heart. Plus, he said if they would have went the way that was near, they would have seen more and they would have repented and fainted. So he didn't take them that way. They wasn't ready for that. So he took them by the way of the wilderness so he could prove their heart. This is what he told them. He said, we, You walked in the wilderness 40 years, whatever. He said, Your shoes didn't run out. Your garments, your raiments didn't wear out. Come on, somebody. 
And you know what this parable says to the church? Your feet didn't swell up. And this is the one that knocked me off my chair. He said, I suffered you to hunger so I could feed you. Now, you can, you can look at that on both sides. He said, I allowed you to be hungry so I could feed you. But then on the other side, he said, I didn't even have to let you get hungry in the meeting. Look at that problem. And we think we're going to come up with something more with that. No. You got to believe God. You got to believe Him. It doesn't matter the situation. You got to believe Him. He said, Look, I'm suffering you to hungry, to hungry so I can feed you. I allow you to experience hunger. You had never been hungry before. I allowed you to experience it. So I can feed you. Now, the catch is this. You say, oh, they got hungry. You just feed them. Wrong. Look, they're in the wilderness. Ain't no 7-Eleven. Ain't no McDonald's. Come on now. A wilderness is a non-inhabitable place. So I'm not living in the wilderness. Come on, that's right. You've got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. There is no, there is no civilization in the wilderness. Maybe I don't know the zone, but not humans. You don't, we don't live in the wilderness. But he took them through the wilderness. He fed the manna from heaven every morning. It was this day our daily bread. And a lot of us clown about that bread. We ain't party parents. We gotta, we gotta leave people alone. God is a very purposeful God. And you got to thank God daily for his daily bread. They receive manna every morning. And on the sixth day, he said, I want you to pick, it, pick up enough for the Sabbath. Because I ain't, I ain't sending none tomorrow, and you ain't going to do no work out there tomorrow. Look at that. In the wilderness. In the wilderness. We get in situations. And oh my God, my life is over. Your life is not over. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. This is what he told Moses to tell the children. They had got to the Red Sea. And the Red Sea was in front and mountains on both sides. And Pharaoh and his uncle was coming behind them. And they stuck at the river, at the Red Sea. And and, and 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 they cry to the Lord. The Lord said, Moses, why are you why are you crying to me? He said, What you got there in your hand? Come on now. He said, Stretch it out. Come on. Now, Moses, he said, What you got there in your hand, Moses? Moses had a rod. He said, Stretch that rod out. Now, the thing about that is. The Lord had showed him his power way before he got to that very city. When he first sent him to Pharaoh, he said, Go your rod down, you get the rod down. Turn into a serpent. Pharaoh, the uh, magicians and sorcerers or whatever, do they rod down, they turn into a serpent. Pharaoh got the yeah, gear, I see we can do that too. And uh, Moses rod did what? He did what? He said, the Lord said, pick the rod up. And, uh, no, first, first of all, first of all, yeah, it, 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 it turned into a sermon and he kind of jumped. But anyway, he did all that. And he said, pick the rod up. He picked it up. Went back to a rod. And he said, uh, stretch your hand out. Stretch your hand out a little bit. His hand got a little left. Got left in his hand. He said, put it back in the book. Bring it out. Hold it. He says, hold his other hand. Somebody said, down to your blessing. They ain't been one by one. Come on. You got to understand this is attacking your faith. And I want you to get rooted and settled in your belief in God. The Bible says, our faith does not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. So now that the Red Sea said, Moses, look at that in the hand. That same staff. Stretch it out. You know, the dirty water that rolls up and, and they walked across on dry land. Walked across on dry land. And then the enemy that chased them tried to get through that 
and they drowned. The water just came back down. It was like him, Cherries, and Carson, and everything. You have an assurance, but it's in your faith. You have to believe God that there is no other, there is no other means of salvation. It's in your faith. If you don't, if, if, if you and I are going to be anything pertaining to God, we are going to be it according to your faith. Period. Period. And so as it is always, we encourage you to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Except the man is born again of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We thank God for you. Those of you that faith will be a blessing to the ministry. And you see the donations to gifts, the love offerings to New Beginnings Community Church, more California, Dignified. Sure, the Lord will bless you. Generosity to the liberality. Bible will fear he loves the cheerful people. Give, give as you have purpose in your heart. We don't have no tricks, no gimmicks. What's the day today? Six. Six, sixteen, twenty-four. Six, six hundred, sixteen dollars and twenty-four cents. We ain't got no gimmicks, no tricks. The Lord loves the cheerful giver. And then you give, every man give as his purpose in his heart. And the Lord will bless what you do. He will bless your obedience. His word says, be a cheerful giver. Don't give grudgingly. If you got a grudge, give it, don't give it. But that is not what the word says. Give it cheerfully. And it'll come back to you. That's the Bible. As you bread upon the waters, and in many days it will come back to you. But I ain't gonna, we ain't got no gimmicks for you. And so we thank God for your faith, but we pray that you'll be Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Our Father's Day, thank God. Those of us that are in person, let us stand.